Are you tired of the young gentleman? Not yet. How will I be able to tell the quick from the dead, William? Those that have three sprigs are double whiskey, Mr. Bedford. <laughs> Maybe we'll find my son Edward will be man enough to take a double barrel one, William. No, sir. The young master didn't inherit the Bedford thirst. No, you're right. He's a good son, but he drinks too little. However, I can forgive him for that. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Meantime, William, I will gild the lily. Yes, sir. Similia similibus curentur. That was the way the Romans said. To have the dog is good for the bite. <laughs> and how did the Romans say, let sleeping dogs lie? The salad is said, cave cannon. Beware of the dog. Malcolm, last night I had the strangest dream. I dreamt that the roses in the garden were dripping with blood. But they smell just as fragrant this morning, my dear. Then you don't really think there is going to be a war? Certainly not. You're worrying yourself needlessly. Well, then what is going to happen? Well, just what is happening now. The plantation will continue to run. Birds will continue to sing. And I will continue to reach for the bottle. <laughs> Just like hers, isn't it? Hers? Whose was it to be like this time? Well, haven't you been raving about the Empress Eugenie? Tis rather like Eugenie, isn't it? There. Compare me with the Empress of France. You think the Empress has ears that stick out like yours? Do mine stick out? Well, I wouldn't exactly say stick out. A little obtrusive sort of flap out. Even if you are my cousin, Duncan Bedford... Your you, elder cousin. Even if you are my elder cousin, Duncan Bedford... Your you, elder cousin, Duncan, must come to a decision about 20 white mules. And I dress the way you like, and you have nothing more to say. Oh, yes. I could say a very great deal. For example? Come on, just this once be witty. <laughs> I'm not a wit. But I can say, Alva, that you're a flower of the old South. No, you're not a wit. That you represent all its virtues. And what's more, you embody all its faults. Ah, now that's a true compliment. Men love women for their faults. I read it in a book. Which fault of mine do you love best, Cousin Duncan? Your elder Cousin Duncan hasn't admitted that men love women for their faults. Do you suppose we could get along without those 20 mules? You haven't even been thinking of me. Oh, yes, I have. But it's been more or less mixed up with mules. Then please think entirely of mules, until you look like mules, have long ears like mules. <laughs> and then tonight, when Edward brings home his handsome friend, I'll twist him around my little finger. I'll have him proposing to me in no time. <laughs> you don't fool me, Duncan Bedford. Hm. I know your game, Mr. smug -faced Sneak. Calling me aside and pretending to fumble, drool in old-fashioned compliments. And all because you're just plain jealous. I'm jealous of any man who can afford to buy out 20 white meat. Mew! <laughs> what a child. You're looking awfully well. We're so happy to have you home again, son. Oh, how I've missed you. I'm never going to let you go away again. All right. I'll take my degree at home. You're so much more charming than those professors. Edward, your friend. 
Welcome to Portobello, Mr. Pendleton. Well, Lord, Mr. Bedford, you look like Edward's older brother. Oh, Pardon me, I present Mr. Pendleton. His virtues are numberless and his vices few. Oh, a very <laughs> distressing picture, sir. Where are you from, Mr. Pendleton? Uh, Texas, sir. I was afraid he couldn't find his way home for the holidays. Geography is his weak point. I don't know how he ever found his way to Texas to be born. <laughs> and this is my mother. Well, Miss Bedford, now that I've found Portobello, I don't have to find any other place on the map. If it has a way of choosing the most gallant friends. Oh. <laughs> and where is this paragon of a daughter, Miss Bedford, that Edward's always boasting about? Well. Miss Mary. <laughs> and this is our cousin, Miss Mary Cherry. How do you do? I declare, Cousin Mary, you still got the loveliest hair of any woman oh. in Mississippi. It's gone away. Hey, where is Valette and Duncan and Middleton? Where is everybody? Just looks like a little old angel. Now, sister, you are the prettiest girl in Mississippi without even trying. Oh, don't kiss me. You miss me. Oh, have I? Hey, look out. You're rumpling your dress. Oh, I hate dress now. <laughs> Tell me, is it nice? I'm scared to death to Here, me. Here, get your fan spread and your streamers out. Sail right into it. Make him haul down his colors. <laughs> Duncan! <laughs> Edward! Gee, you lop-haired old jackrabbit. You mealy old cotton bud. Come on. You hear me? <laughs> My cousin, Mr. Bedford. Mr. Pendleton. How do you do, sir? Mr. Pendleton? Edward, you'd better stick to those with just a little mint. He's got your head, Sally. Also, my good Ben. <laughs> <laughs> but this Texan here, he'll want one with six rattles and a button. Well, from a Mississippi gentleman, I consider that a very great honor. <laughs> well, what do you say, Mr. Texan? <coughs> uh, well, it's uh, light and fanciful, sir. <laughs> light and fanciful. <laughs> Edward, dear, I'm so happy you're home. Valette, how well you look. Oh, darling, I always look well after reading Byron. He brings out something in me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but the only man I could find was old Archie Pendleton. But you're so young, Mr. Pendleton. Too young for a university man. <laughs> but I adore you. Youth and poetry. Do you know, Mr. Pendleton, there's something quite like Byron about you. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> uh, don't you think so, Duncan? Oh, uh, uh, yes, very. Edward, every word you said is true. Miss Villette, I'm afraid your brother is uh, guilty of gross understatement. Why, you're a flower of the old South. <laughs> what a wit. <laughs> <coughs> well, Bella, uh, yes, you wanted to arrange the flowers. It's nearly supper time. Oh, yes, I did. Thank you. I loathe food, but I adore flowers. They help me to bear up through a meal. Poor thing. She won't eat a bite at the table, but she'll take the ham bone to her room after supper. <laughs> Cousin Mary. <laughs> Giving away my secrets of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Mary? Ballet? Mr. Pendleton, on my left. Thank you, Miss Miss Villette, that's the loveliest centerpiece I ever saw. Oh, thank you. Archie, this is my brother Middleton. Well, how do you do, sir? You know, Mr. Pendleton, my sister Valetta's a heartless flirt. Mother! <laughs> Children should be seen and not heard. What about old maid? William, take Master Middleton to his room. Yes, Talk 
Jackson has just captured Fort Sumter from the Yankees. Yes, that will set the South on fire. Is Edward home? Yes, he's at supper. You and Edward get ready to ride in the current seat. We're turning out a hundred horsemen tonight. Best families in the parish. George here is going to be captain. We'd like Mr. Malcolm to contribute 20 horses. We'll stop by here to get them. Not 20 horses to spare on this plantation. Spare? Everything's to spare. We'll hang Abe Lincoln to a sour apple tree. Come on, George. Ponto's is next. Look here, gentlemen. Don't rouse the whole countryside. Take this thing calmly. Let's don't fan the fire. Won't you come in and have a drink? When we come back. That's two more plantations to visit. Don't pay us, something. You and Edward be ready to join us tonight. And ask Mr. Malcolm to turn out every horse he can. Come on, boy. Go to the wall. Walk to the gun. sit on the floor in that lovely front, Mother. Don't you like the way I've done your room over? I hung your Belgian gun over the mantel. I wondered if you wanted a canopy over your bed. Then I remembered how you always like to throw Middleton up in the air when he comes in every morning to see you. <laughs> and I was afraid you'd throw him through the canopy. Oh, he's much too big for that now. And very grown up. Just about as grown up as those lads who rode over here and caused all the excitement. I could shoot George McGee and that tall of a lad. They ruined a lovely supper. But, Mother, you don't seem to understand. This, this is serious. A lot of fools here about have gotten it into their heads that the war started. And they're marching off heaven knows where to find it. Someone ought to stop them. First thing you know, they'll really start a war. But, Mother, the war has started. Nonsense. Your father says there isn't going to be any war. But everyone will come to their senses. Edward, it means so much to us to have you home again. And it's great to be here, Mother. We've planned so many things. Picnics, hunting trips, dancing parties. What do you think of that? I think it'd be fun. Well, Mr. Pendleton's here, hmm? But maybe he won't be, Mother, with all this war excitement. Archie's very impulsive, you know. Then you must convert him to our calm way of doing things. Must we? Yes, Mother. Edward, don't rush away at the first rumble of the gun. Do they, son? No, Mother. Edward, look at this talking. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful Diana, queen of my heart, live while I woo thee with soft melody. Gone are the cares of life's busy throng. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Beautiful dreamer, awaken to me. Oh, sing it again. Oh, no, not again. That's the third time. Well, sing it the fourth, fifth, sixth time. Sing it. Oh, just keep singing it. Forever. Oh, no, really. <laughs> Why, Mr. Pendleton? But you're always hiding your face behind it. And I like to look at your face. And I intend to look at your face. I don't know what to say to you. You know, I know I'm acting like a fool, but I like it. And you're going to like it. Something deep down inside of me says you'll have to like it. Miss Villette, do you believe in love at first sight? Oh, no. Well, I do. Oh, wait here a moment. Don't you move. That makes 18 horses in all. If Edward and Pendleton go, it will be 20. Are you letting Edward go? I don't feel that a father should dictate to his son in a matter like this. Uh, Mr. Bedford, uh, yes? I I'm riding away with those fellas if they'll take me. Oh? Uh, I know everything is hasty tonight. You see, sir, it's got to be had not it. But, uh, well, uh, ha have I your permission to speak to Miss Follette about a matter that's very near my heart? Well, everything is hasty tonight, Mr. Pendleton. I should say, sir, anything in your heart bursting for utterance should be given full voice, sir. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that's what you wanted him to do, isn't it? Oh, no, not really. I only did it because... Oh, Duncan, please help me. I, I can't seem to handle him at all. <laughs> what? Aren't you twisting him around your little finger? No, he's twisting me around his. <laughs> oh, Duncan, please, don't desert me in my hour of need. But there's nothing I can do. You got yourself into it. Now get yourself out of it. Just remember, you are the Empress of France. to your father. Oh, uh, what a place. Well, you pretty, probably think I'm pretty quick, may, maybe forward, but, well, you know, I am going away, and well, you can't tell what'll happen, can you? Oh, no. And so, I just want to ask you two things. Kiss me this once, Celeste. Promise that you'll wait for me until I return. Well, if I grant the first request, must I promise the second? We've known each other for three hours. You've been going to war for an hour. When will you return? Not until the last shot is fired, and not until the last flag is furled. I shall take both requests under consideration. Even if I don't let you kiss me, how will I be able to resist you when you come back all covered with medals and glory? Oh, Celeste, darling. Celeste. The boys are coming. With young and hearty welcome and hooray, hooray. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies and they will all pronounce, we'll all be together, your friends. I'm not watching for the day. Oh, 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 o
God help the Union Army. How's your mouth, Mr. Pendleton? Oh, Mr. Pendleton, this horse would bite his way to the Union Army. Good luck to you, Mr. Pendleton. Come on, Mr. Pendleton. Take this little bay mare, Archie. She's got as much sense as a set of dogs. Oh, no. I'm not going to warn any rocking chair. Stand still, you son of Satan. All right, boys, here we go. Come right in on a Sunday, Edward. Don't think I'm trying to stay behind, Archie. Oh, of course not. We'll be together. Johnny can finally home again. Hooray, hooray. We'll give him a hearty welcome. Oh, come on, boys. Hooray. Father, man, and go with you. Boys, Nearly the age of the Mr. Malcolm, I reckon that'll be Peruvian black-eyed peas. I declare, Mr. Malcolm, seems like them cotton invoice folks in London don't know there's a war. Well, it takes an Englishman a long time to catch on, will you? Don't break my heart with the spent wheel. No, ma'am, but this ain't Mr. Pendleton's writing. That big mark on there looks like it's written by a McGee hand. So George has written you at last. Middleton. Excuse me, darling. Read George's letter, darling. Dear Spillette, I know you would love me if you saw my long yellow beard and the fine blue pants I borrowed off a Yankee gentleman the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the elegant George McGee having to accept pants from a stranger? Well, I can't. <laughs> The gentleman didn't want to give up these pants, but he was holding up his hands, and they were the first things that caught my eye. <laughs> <laughs> As he was about seven foot tall, I can truthfully say that my new pants cover an honest heart. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Which beats steadfastly for only you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what precious. Let, I have a deeply affecting message for you. Now, now, darling. Pendleton wanted you to have the locket. That he left in his trunk. He hoped that Miss Sally would send the watch to his mother. Pendleton's father had received the watch for valor in the Mexican War. Milton was a very brave gentleman. I would that the South had more like him. He fell like a man of honor, one of the first of us to go. And carried an order over a field so shell-swept, it seemed certain no one could get across it alive. Pendleton did not die in vain. The general said the delivery of that message won the battle. He often spoke of you, Valette. And I think I can say that he died happy in his love for you. You may derive it at least a little consolation from knowing that, my dear. George. Poor, brave little Texan. To the last shot is fired. The last flag. Well, 
Father, will you give me the little bay mare? Everything I have is yours, son. But that's all I want. You're thinking of going away? Yes. I must go now. No word to your mother? Please, Father. I can't. You'll stand better for your son after a few days. Oh. You won't be taking your case of razors or anything? It might be too hard on Mother for me to pack anything. You have some money? Enough to buy a few things. You've always been your mother's child, Edward. You're like a man I've always known and never really had a chance to talk to. I'm sorry, too, Father. I must have hurt you many times that I didn't know anything about. Oh, no. That isn't true. Come to think of it, I can't remember that you ever really did. I wouldn't change anything about you. I like you just as you are. Thanks, Father. And goodbye. Kiss Mother for me, will you? You're going to be all right. Give him the warm milk every two hours. He's taking it all right now. Yes, sir, Martha Duncan. Oh, oh, it hurts. He'd have sure been a goner if it hadn't have been for you. Good evening, Dr. Bedford. I got another patient here for you. What are you doing out this time of night? Well, you should be in bed, child like you. I was almost till Mixie Hinelli split my ears with his yelling. Well, what do you mean, raising a rumpus in the middle of the night? I'm going to have my stay like one a day. He's got a spin in his foot. <laughs> Come here. Yes. What you going to do? What'll we do with it? Oh. I reckon we'll have to shoot him. What'd you say, Mrs. Hillette? Well, if you can't walk anymore. Oh, yes, sir. I can walk. I can walk good. See him? Guy watches you. We'll be friends. He'll soon be robbing all over the place. He'll like the things I like. Broad field with the sun shining down on him. Hmm. It'll be fun watching him grow. I like to see things grow, Valette. Not torn down. You mean the war? I wish you could understand how I feel about it. Sorry you don't. Duncan. Yes? You know how much I've always valued your opinion. For instance, like the way I came to you first and I changed my hair. It's always been like that, hasn't it? Yes, I guess it has. But there's something else 
I don't think you do, Lou. What's that? How proud I've always been of you. I don't know why. Neither do I. But I was. And I've hugged being proud of you very close to my heart. And now? And now? I've lost it. And I'm sad. Because I'm against this war and refuse to become a part of it? If I believed that was a reason. If I believed it. I might still be proud of you. But you do believe it. No, I don't. What do you believe? I believe that you're afraid. You're talking like a little fool. Am I? I've told you the truth, and that's the end of it. And I call you a liar, and that's the end of it. Colette. Liar! Don't say that. Liar! Liar! liar. Who's there? Major Rushton, 2nd Mississippi Cavalry, madam. Sorry to disturb you, but we need direction. Open up, please. Right, just in a minute. Oh. Yankees! Sorry, we have no time to waste. Where is the man of the house? Bring her along. Round up everybody in the house. We need you. Oh, Yankees! This is an outrage! Well, I quite agree with you, but we have no choice in the matter. We're headed toward Vicksburg, lost the road and wandered far out of the way. All we want you to do is to show us the way to the river. I'll do no such thing! You'll be released unharmed if you do. Otherwise, I'm afraid I shall have to shoot you. Shoot! Go ahead! Shoot! Oh, no, Malcolm! Oh, please, let me by! Let her in. Malcolm! Do as they say. They'll kill you if you don't. I deeply regret this, madam. I give you my word that nothing will happen to him if he behaves sensibly. I won't behave sensibly. In that case, I shall reluctantly be compelled well, to take Malcolm, him out. for my sake, for the children's sake. Reluctantly. Of all the unmitigated gall coming into a man's home. You kill my father and I'll kill you. Middleton. Uh, bring them in here. Yes, come in now. Mother, don't let them take father away. I shall have to lock all of you in here. A necessary precaution, I hope you understand. Shut up. Well, let's get out of here. No. 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 Oh. Oh. Up you go now, Grandfather. Oh. Oh. What? I want advice, not soothing, sir. You, sir, have never been awakened by the flat of a saber playing a military tattoo across the round of your anatomy. You've never been called grandfather out of your proper turn. You've never been subjected to the crowning indignity of leading a party of the enemy toward their own base. Have you ever ridden 20 miles at night in your nightshirt? But you said yourself they were as decent as they could be. Except for my dignity, sir. Awakened by the flat of a saber. No Bedford was ever awakened like that before. You don't believe in this war. I wasn't sure until last night that I did. But by Jingo, I believe in it now! Father, how tall must I be before I can join the army? My son, saddle your pony. Ride the plantation. Tell everyone to come here to the big house. Are you taking me to war, Father? No, son, I'm going in your place. Will you leave me a gun to kill you? Son, when I get through, there won't be any Yankees left. But let a 
I'm going to war. No, no, Paul, but... Yes, I am. What else is it? I had it. I know I had it. I wore it at the inauguration of Governor Whitman in 1850. Well, it isn't here, and I wouldn't give it to you if it was. Oh, please, darling, do tell me you're not going, will you? I've got to find it. War and high hats don't go together. Oh, decidedly, they don't go together. I've got to find it, I tell you. Well, I won't let you go. You can't leave me. Well, I can't leave you in this hat. Where is the big white one? Here it is. All right, go away, you all. Check your responsibilities, leave your family. Oh, Sally, don't. Please don't. <laughs> if you were sober, Malcolm Bedford, you wouldn't go. And struck me across the tender part of my anatomy with the flat of a saber. Mr. Malcolm, Mr. Malcolm. A ain't this the hat? It's the hat, William. It's the hat. The hat. The very hat. The very hat. I wore it in 1850 at the inauguration of Governor Quitman. Ah. No. Oh, Malcolm, you're just being stubborn. I want you folks to guard and protect this plantation. Yes, sir. I've never been a bad master to you, no, no. and you've never been bad slaves. No, no. What will happen to you, what will happen to all of us, depends upon the wisdom of Almighty God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Miss Sally will be your mistress. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My son Middleton will be your master. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now that's all I have to say. Into your hands, I commend us all. Amen. 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 Oh, don't don't worry about what I said. Yeah. I'm really happy that you're doing what you think is right. I'll be proud of you always. I'm proud of this moment. Don't worry about us. We'll run the plantation. We'll be waiting for you. God bless you, darling. You're going to win this war. Goodbye, Father. Two wearing uniform. A blue one. You mean to say we ain't gonna plant cotton in the big field? No, we're going to plant corn. We never planted corn in the big field before. Well, men and horses must have corn. 
Don't you know there's a war? Yes, sir. But, 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 but what's that got to do with us? Now, Mose. Morning, Mr. Mm -hmm. Duncan. Yes? I've come to apologize. Forget it. Especially about the blue uniform. Well, I knew you didn't mean that. Of course I didn't. Of course you didn't. A man can't be a traitor and a coward, too. That's impossible. Naturally, if I dared to fight, I'd choose the South. Duncan, what are you trying to do? Break my heart. You can't break the heart of an empress, can you? But you can break the heart of a girl. Especially when she's a very little girl and doesn't know very much. Sally's ordered a wagon with a bay team, says she's going to Shadow to look for Miss Edward's body. Body? There's been a message? No, sir. Miss Sally had a vision. She saw it just as plain. She saw him stumble and fall along the side of a stone fence, and she's going to Shiloh. Duncan. We must keep her here. Yes, sir. But you saw young master just as plain. Sorry. You know, I had a letter three days ago. He said there was going to be a battle. Duncan, it's happened. I saw it. But you can't be sure. My boy is lying on the field somewhere. I must go. Mother! Go get my shots right. I heard him call to me, the voices in my ears, very far away. Yes, Mother, yes. Duncan. Take good care of her. And tell her that we miss him so much. Marsh Duncan! Marsh Duncan!
It's Edward. Yes, darling. He's dead. Yes. Now is where they can't hurt him anymore. Come, Duncan. No, Sally. I'm... I'm staying here. Yes, Duncan. I understand. It is rather like you, Janie, isn't it? You'll be no more grown up tonight than you are now. You like the things I like. Broad fields with the sun shining down on them. It'll be fun watching him grow. I like to see things grow for that. Not torn down. What a child. I love you. For now, young master, dear. Miss Sally wants you inside. I want the pigeon deed out of my hand. Some other time. Storm coming in the north. Where's the storm, William? The where did it come from? They know storm, fool. Go back to the kitchen. Whoa, 
Whoa, I tell you. Soon as I get Whoa. Me. Oh, my goodness. Yes, sir. Oh. General Grant in Vicksburg. I saw him with my own eyes. Most disreputable, unkempt man I ever saw. Struggling around like he owned the place. And Yankees everywhere. Now what's going to happen to us? Oh, my goodness. Walk the horses before you put him up, Scipio. We don't want him to catch cold. We, oui, we, oui. who is this here we? I run his horses for the last time. Let the white folks run his dear own horses. Scipio, you do what William Veal tells you. You heard me, young miss. I'm gonna be free. That's what I am. Free! Free! Free for the rules! Yes, hallelujah! Scipio, come back here. He knows what's coming. Let him go. If we had any sense, we'd all go. Let me, let me ask you something. You've all been slaves long enough, ain't you? Yeah. You want what belongs to you? Yeah. Is you going to take what belongs to you? Yeah. No, you ain't. You're going to sit around here until somebody eats it all up. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, listen. All oh, this is yours. Yes, yes. 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 Go and get it. <laughs> to leave them till they're properly stabled. William! Miss Scalaway. William, you Scalaway. Don't you know it's time for our dinner? Miss Lynn, for William, what's happened? The colored folks gone wild since they heard about Vicksburg. They're stealing everything they can lay their hands on. They say it belongs to them. Oh! Miss Sally, I don't know what they're going to do. They'll be in the house next. Ball all the windows, lock the doors, go on. I knew it. I knew it. When I was... Be quiet, Miss Lynn. Go fix yourself up, will you? Yes, ma'am. You listen to me, we take the carriage and fly away from this place. We will not leave this place, and we'll lock no door. Mother! Mother! Sorry. Wanted horse to the stable. Put him in myself. No strength. My hands. Well, Sorry. No wonder. For anyone to ride as far as you must have ridden. I think you're wonderful. Father always was marvelous with horses. Did you win the war, Father? Middleton, run tell William Beale. Put all the kettles on the fire. Run, run. Father, you're wounded. Just a little bit. Shoulder. Malcolm! Why, Miss Mary, haven't you watched the way yet? Malcolm, don't talk foolishness. But we're so proud of you. You're a hero. Thanks. Great strain being a hero. Oh, darling, you really look so well. Yes, you do, Father. I'm just a little tired. I'll rest a while. I'll, I'll go help William with the kettle. Father's come home! He's won the war! Praise the Lord. Things haven't changed here. It makes me happy. I've come home, Sly. Where are you going? 
the slave quarters. Stop them. You must know. Right, Mrs. Do be careful, Valette. I'm no longer a child, Mother. Father! Did you... Millicent. Yeah, come with me, honey. Your father's in there, John? Yes, sir. I, I want you to have to Boss Lincoln's done give us the land. Hallelujah! Yeah. 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 give us the houses. We're yeah. yeah. Not another day's work. We're yeah. 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 Yankee men with blue coats is coming down to give us everything to eat. Yeah. Yeah. No more plowing. No. no more breaking new ground. No, no more planting. No. no more chopping cotton. No. Just sitting in the sun. Yeah. 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 going to run this plantation. Yeah. They're not going to work on this plantation. I does. Can you get off this plantation? Who says so? Old Master says so. Old Master no say no more. Abraham Lincoln say. Hallelujah! Abraham Lincoln said the army of the Lord. Freedom's come. We ain't slaves no more. No. I, I don't say you should be slaves. But I do say you must work if you want to eat. And, and if you want to be happy, you can't go stealing things that don't belong to you. Oh, don't let her pull the wool over your eyes. She wants you to keep on working. That's right. Tell us, kiddo. The Yankees won't free you from work. You'll have to work whether you're free or not. Don't you believe it? You're telling lies. Mm. Why, you good for nothing. How dare you? Why, you wretched, ungrateful scoundrel. How dare you say I don't speak the truth? Kato. You don't know these Yankee people. This is your home. Why do you want to destroy your own home? Why, Cato, you, you used to take care of me when I was a little girl. You, you made a cradle for my first doll. You remember you used to call me your little white bird. And when I fell off the mule and broke my wrist, you carried me in your arms. And you cried because you said your little white bird had broken its wing. You remember? Yes. Cato, you haven't made me that rabbit trap you promised me. Why haven't you been to the big house to see me? I've been powerful busy. But I'm going to make you a little rabbit trap for you. Honestly. Yeah. Thank you, Cato. It's so good to have you back home again, Matt. Ah, William. Frost the tall glass. Drip it with bourbon. Garnish it with mint leaves. Yes, sir. Here it is. How good it is. If you'll just add six rattles and a button. Yes, sir. Old times is here again, Master. They still sing. I must go and greet them. Yes, Thank you. 
You're free to go where you please. Your master won't need you any longer. One ounce of sense, we wouldn't have stayed on here after all the slaves left us. Well, that, that's for me, not too well done. Will you ask that child not to talk so loud? Don't frighten the children, Miss Mary. Sit down, please. Oh, don't sneak around that way. Why don't you make a noise so nobody can hear you instead of scaring people after that? Yes. The silver safe now, Miss Ellen. Thank you, William. Oh. Just blind. Nervous as a wet hen. I don't know why. After all, Yankees are human beings, just like ourselves. It's not a bad, but how can you sit there and say Yankees are human beings? How can you? Good evening, ladies. Don't you know you've got no business here? However, it's a nice house. My troop's lucky to be the first to pick its bones. Take what you want and get out. We'll take it all right. Getting out's another matter. Hello, Bob. I hope you're going to be a gentleman. Ma'am, I hope you're going to be a lady. Do you want to know what I've got on my brain? When I do, I'll cut your head open and find out. No, I'll tell you without all that trouble. It's ham. Southern home cured ham. I've got ham on the brain. Hey, Spig, Spig, look, I got a party dress to send Mamie. The kitchen was to be mine. However, I'll trade you a nice ham for the dress. No, please. Please, please, before I'm kill you, give it to me. Isn't it? Now we better all go upstairs. Stay close to me, Middleton. Can't tell where they're hiding. Might better jump out at us any minute. Upstairs and get my horse pistol. Don't let them find me. Please don't let them hang me. I'm sorry I stole your dress. 
I don't hate you people. Please have mercy on me. He dragged along here. Yep, that's all right. Please don't leave. Come on. We're taking them out. They'll hang me. Don't let them find me. No, we won't let them find you. Take him up to Edward's room. A Yankee. What are you doing with him? You do no such thing. You tell him over our soldiers, he's a Yankee. That doesn't matter, he's wounded. I'll stay here and watch. Ellie Bedford, are you going to allow Yankees to make any go? Anybody in the house? Open it, open it up. Who is it? This has been a cavalry. You see? One minute. Come on, Eddie, come on, we can't wait all night. You mustn't go around waking up good people this way at all hours. We've had enough here as it is. We have to give up our home if we're to be bothered by soldiers all the time. Sorry, ma'am. We're hanging raiders with pillage our women folks, but one of them got away. But I'm not in the hangman's squad. I don't have anything to do with it. Can anybody leave us alone? I'm sorry, lady. Then go on away and leave us in peace. What's the matter here, man? Who are you, sir? Captain Bedford, 3rd Mississippi. Uh, what are you doing? Don't come. Sorry. Don't. All right, what on earth do you want from this lady, Sergeant? We were hanging some raiders, and one of them got away. He didn't get in here. All right, we better make sure. Go on in. Now find him and string him up. You two, cover the other side of the house. Oh, Sally, to be walking through this door again. To be home again, even for a minute. I know. Miss Mary. Don't go. Let me kiss you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> And now I want another kid. Uh, where's Valette? Wait, I'll call her. Oh, no, I'll find her myself. Why, what's the matter with you all anyway? Aren't you glad to see me? You, you know we are. <laughs> well, I'll tell Valette you don't look it. Oh, just a minute. I'll, um, I'll get a can. Oh, but Sally, you know I can find my way around this house in the dark. It's my best jacket. They'll hang me for sure if they find me. I say you're my brother. He's just a boy, Duncan. He's too young to die. What's your race about? How many were there? Where did you come from, Anthony? North Illinois. Scouting troop for the advance guard. How many of you? Twenty-four. Headquarters? The railroad station, down the road. Don't really stop it, he's hurt. What are you doing in this jacket? I gave it to him. You did. Get it off. Put on your own. Duncan, what do you mean? What are you going to do with him? I want to turn him over to our men, of course. But they'll hang him. They will, they should. Duncan! How cruel you've grown. It's war, Valette. But you can't send this boy to his death. I can't do anything else. Yes, you can. Oh, come back to me, Duncan, the way you used to be. The Duncan I knew I had different eyes and a different voice. He loved me. He loved so many things. Who can love many things any longer? Oh, tell me you won't give him up, Duncan. Tell me you won't give him up. Oh, Duncan, darling, promise me you won't do that. <laughs> Don't look at this boy as though you wanted to kill him yourself. Come on, get it off. No, 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 Duncan. Oh, that I should have driven you to this all hate and killing anger. The thief knew the chance he took and the penalty, and he's going to pay it and pay it now. No. Who is it? Sergeant Snow, Fifth Alabama Cavalry. We're searching the house. Come.
Come in. Couldn't find a trace of him. Get well, Edward, and follow us. The third Mississippi won't be far away. You'll beat out your wound. Thanks. Look after your brother. We better get started, sir. Right away. Maybe the Yanks. Douglas. Come back to me. Come back alive. Duncan, I'll be waiting for you. things out of here. Two minutes. I'll be generous and give you five. This is our home. What should we do? Where should we go? Madam, I want you to understand. I'm not acting on my own discretion. I'm only obeying orders. Well, let's get rid of him.
Hurry up with the supper, Miss Mary. Here come our men, home from the field. <gasps> Live and learn, that's my motto. Come here, son. There's big, long, green worms in the corn. But I just pretended like they were General Grant's army and whacked them dead, every one. Good for you. Hush, Miss Mary. The war's been over six months. We're not going to talk about it anymore. But, Mother, when I grow up, if there's another war, you wouldn't want me to go, would you? No, son, I wouldn't want you to go. But I'd go anyway, wouldn't I? Yes, you'd go anyway. Now, you're not going to sit down at the table with those hands. You go wash them. I was just going. All right, go on. Come on to supper, darling. I made some corn pudding, just the way you like it. Mother? Yes? Remember when you heard Edward calling you that time? Are you frightened? Frightened, Alex? Frightened of my own child calling me when he needed me. Duncan needs me too, Mother. I keep hearing him calling me. He just now called me again. It sounded almost like he was crying. Oh, darling. I've been in military prison. Oh, my poor darling. 